This comes from the Jerusalem Post dot com. And this is Trump's peace plan. Israeli control over settlements in Palestinian state. And as you guys can see here, we're going down to the map. And as you guys can see here, it lays out where the territories are going to be. Um, can you go into this, Barry? Can you give us a little education about what's going on with uh, this peace plan and, um, and such? Absolutely, Jermaine. The deal of the century, as Trump calls it, is not hyperbole. It truly is. The question is whether or not the Palestinians and their leadership, who are corrupt, murdering thugs, want a country of their own more than they want to keep skimming billions out of the donations coming in from around the world. Here's a little history lesson to begin with. Originally, Israel... The homeland for the Jewish people is set out in the Balfour Declaration by the British who were running this area of the world, called for a Palestinian state on both sides of the Jordan River, including all of the Golan Heights, all of Gaza, all the way down to Egypt. And then it, that was in the 20s. And then over the next 20 years or so, there were various new declarations that kept shrinking the territory. When Israel was established in 1948, every single Arab country around Israel, the new Israel, attacked. And they proclaimed loudly for anyone that was going to listen, we are going to drive the Jews into the sea. We are going to kill every single one of them. And there will not be a Jew left alive. Jordan attacked. Iraq attacked. Syria, mm -hmm. Lebanon, Egypt, and everyone else they could raise armies from. Miraculously, and I, you don't use that word lightly because they were outnumbered by a ridiculous number in arms, in tanks, in planes, and obviously in armies, the Jews survived. However, at the end of the war, the armistice, which was not a peace treaty, they just stopped fighting. The Jordan army had conquered all of the West Bank of the Jordan River. They had driven the Jews out and they had conquered half of Jerusalem, including the holiest place on earth for Jews, which is the Temple Mount, where the Temple, temple of Solomon stood, considered by many religions to be the holiest place on this planet. From 1967 back to 1948, it was occupied by the Arabs illegally. Jordan annexed it illegally. It was never recognized by the world. And in 1967, in that war that was intended to wipe out all the Jews again, Israel liberated those lands. They liberated the Gaza Strip, they liberated Jerusalem, and they liberated the West Bank. Ever since then, the world has clamored to give that back to the Arabs that were there under Jordanian control. Now, on the go life, here's a now myth comes that your viewers need to hear. That can take the word Palestinian to on the go. by your viewers sounds like a race of people. It sounds like a nationality. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a genetic identity. It's not. It was made up. And who made it up? Hold on to your britches. The KGB. Mm. Yasser Arafat was brought to Moscow where he studied and was tutored by the KGB. And they created an identity that never existed before 1967. And they called it the Palestinians. They were supposed to be the indigenous people from the West Bank and the Jordan uh, River on both sides. But ironically, the leadership of this new country nationality were not from there. They were from different places. For example, how many of your viewers know Yasser Arafat, Egyptian, trained by the KGB. Oh. He wasn't even born in the territory that he was going to leave, and so on. So since then, 
the Israeli government has administered the West Bank, but ironically, Judea and Samaria, which are the Hebrew names for those territories, are mentioned in the Bible hundreds of times as the real place where the Jews came from. The word Judea is where Jew comes from. A Jew is a member of the Judean tribe. That's where the name comes from, and it's 3,000 years old. Jews have been there continuously for that period of time. So Trump, may God bless him, is the first leader of America to recognize what I've just told you. Now, in spite of the fact that the Palestinians have never had a territory, have never had a currency, have never had a constitution, have never had a country, they're composed of dozens and dozens of Arabic tribes, there's a recognition that they should have self-government, which I happen to agree with. The question is, can they and will they coexist with the Jews that are also there? The Arabs that live in Israel after 1948 were all offered citizenship. Many of them took it up. And for those of your viewers who have been to Israel, you will meet tons and tons and tons of Israeli Arabs who are Israelis. And they're not discriminated against. They can be in the army. They can be in the government. They can be doctors and lawyers and property owners and administrators and judges and whatever. And they are. They truly are. It is the only place, get this, in the Middle East, out of all the millions of people, where women have equality with men. They can own property. They can vote. They can drive a car, they can be a doctor, a lawyer, they can be in government, they can be a judge. It's the only country in the Middle East like that. But it doesn't go along with the narrative. So Trump has come up with a plan that recognizes the Jewish presence on the other side of the 1948 armistice line. Remember, I told you it wasn't a treaty. That's just where the armies were when they stopped fighting 60 years ago. That literally recognizes where there are settlements of Jews and settlements of Arabs and nobody is going to get moved. That's the essence of the Trump plan. Sounds kind of obvious, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And yet the EU has rejected it. The Arabs have rejected it because they don't want to recognize Israel. And get this, here's the really sad part. This may not shock you because I know you're informed. Not one single Democratic presidential nominee running for office in the United States of America today has endorsed the plan. Oh my God, how shocked are you?